Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. We give him praise. We give him glory. We give him honor. We give him adoration. Glory be to his holy name. We celebrate his majesty for how far he has brought us. Hallelujah. Sorry for that poor internet connectivity. But we thank God we are back to the glory of his holy name. Hallelujah. So we need to serve God by offering, giving unto him in righteousness, in purity, in total sanctification. Glory be to his holy name. Hallelujah. And we have to serve him. Whatever you are offering, do so in holiness. Do so in righteousness. Do so in purity. So we read from Malachi chapter 3 verse 3. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3 says, We need to serve God. We need to give unto God in righteousness. In holiness. So whoever you are, you may be a politician, you may be a lecturer, you may be a pastor, a prophet, you may be a teacher, whoever you are, may be a doctor. You need to serve God. You should know that you are there to serve God. God has placed you in that position to serve him, to save humanity. So do so in righteousness. Don't do that in sin. Don't do so in sin. Do that in righteousness, in purity, in total sanctification unto the Lord. Whatever you are doing, do so in righteousness. Do so in purity. Don't pursue political interest. Don't pursue personal interest or personal aggrandizement. So I will say that considering what is happening now in our nation, Ghana, is not advisable. It's never advisable to continue with the ongoing voters' registration. And even to have the election this year is never advisable. What we need to do is that we have to wait on God. We have to seek the face of God. We must suspend all political activities. Just as we suspended religious activities, public gatherings. If you don't do that, my brother, my sister, I'm afraid I'm not a prophet. But I'm saying that we need to suspend any political activities in this country, Ghana. We have to do that. It's highly advisable. It's highly advisable to do so. We have to suspend the ongoing voters' registration. We have to suspend the election for this year, the impending election. We need to suspend it. We need to suspend it. We have to suspend it. We have to. Why should you do so in the wake of coronavirus? We have to. We, we have to observe proper social distancing, not lip service something, lip saying, purporting to be observing social distancing. If you go to the registration centers, all the registration centers nationwide, we don't see any social distancing. We have to be vigilant. We have to be careful. You must act swiftly. If it's possible to modify the constitution of the Republic of Ghana, it must be done. It should be done. To save lives. To save precious lives. We have to save lives. The word of God said, the Lord Jesus said, what can a man give in exchange for his soul if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What can a man give in exchange for his life? If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. And I want to paraphrase it by saying that from biblical point of view, just as the Lord Jesus said, what can politicians give in exchange for their souls? What can our MPs, our leaders give in exchange for their souls if they gain political power and they lose their lives? What can our politicians our leaders all over the world, particularly in Ghana, give in asking for their lives. If they gain political power and they lose their souls, they lose their lives. If you are not healthy, you are not energetic, and the election is conducted at the end of the day, you happen to be the winner. How are you going to lead and you are no more? How are you going to lead the nation? How are you going to continue your normal activities or programs in life? 
We need to act swiftly. Our leaders must take swift and pragmatic measures to save precious lives. Glory be to God. This is just by the way. Let's continue. We are talking about how must we serve God to battle that point. We should serve God by offering, giving to the Lord in righteousness. We read that from Mark chapter 3, verse 3. Glory be to God. And you need to serve God willingly. Not under compulsion. Not under obligation because it's like you should do so, so you are doing it. You need to serve God willingly. Voluntarily. You need to serve God voluntarily. You need to serve God willingly. You can read that from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16 through 18. Paul said, if I preach the word, that's great. If I don't preach it and it's just under, no, it will take me nowhere. I want us to read that quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16 to 18. We need to serve God voluntarily. We need to serve God willingly, not under compulsion. We need to serve God willingly. Let's read that quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. Let's listen to what Paul the Apostle said. Great. Hallelujah. For if I merely preach the gospel, that gives me no reason to boast. For I feel compelled of necessity to do it. Woe is me if I do not preach the glad tidings, the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus. I'm reading from the Amplified Versions. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now listen, verse 17 says, For if I do this work of my own free will, willingly, voluntarily, from my own free will, then, then I have my pay, my reward, my reward. But if it is not of my own will, I don't do so willingly, voluntarily, but it's done reluctantly and under compulsion I am still entrusted with a secret trusteeship and commission that is of the gospel what then is the actual reward that I get just this just this that in my preaching the good news the gospel I may offer it absolutely free of expense, free of stage. Men of God, women of God, have you been offering preaching free of charge? Listen carefully, this is what Paul said. That, what then is the actual reward that I get? Just this. That in my preaching, in doing the work of God, in serving God, that is the good news of gospel. I may offer it. I have to offer it absolutely free of expense. Free of expense to anybody. Not taking any advantage of my rights and privileges as a preacher of the gospel. So many men of God, so many women of God, all that they do is that whatever they even do in the name of the church or in the house of God, they are paid for. They receive reward for doing so. They are not doing that willingly because they think God will reward them, God will pay them. They receive their pay on this edge. From the church members, church members cannot reward you. Church members cannot pay you. Nobody can reward you, Mr. Preacher, whoever you are. Nobody. We don't serve God like that. Somebody, one, one great man of God once said that even some of the pastors, when they go to they go to town, they buy pure water, ice water, whatever thing they buy, they will bring receipt and they will go and collect it from the church members. They will go and collect from the leadership of the church, from the financial, whoever, the treasurer or the financial secretary. You are not serving God willingly because you are serving, some of you are pastors because of the financial gain that you are after. You know you are going to get we don't serve God like that. Paul was working to pay himself and to support the poor, the needy. So Paul the Apostle said, when you read Acts of the Apostle, chapter 20, verse 35b, that remembering 
As for the apostle chapter 20, verse 35, then remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. That we should work hard to support the poor, the needy, and to remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that it is more blessed, it is more life transforming, it is more crucial, it's a blessing to give than to receive. More blessing to give than to receive. What have you been doing? You create is you think you're just going to church, just put you on credit card, so you are a minister of God. You are a pastor. You think just doing that make you a pastor? Will make you a pastor, will make you a preacher, will make you an apostle. You are being paid for everything that you do in the name of the church or in the name of God. You don't do that. Do so willingly without any pay. Because Paul the Apostle, listen carefully. Verse 18. Let's listen. When you go and read it, study it. Study it and know what the word of God is saying here. First Corinthians chapter 9. I want to repeat it. Not verse 18, just verse 18. When you go can resist it to 18, but just 18. Consider that again. What then is the actual reward that I get? Just this. Just this. Just this. That in my preaching the good news, doing the work of God, I may offer it absolutely free of expense. Free of expense. So if you consider it very well, we shouldn't have preachers that we claim they are in the full-time ministry so at every month they should receive pay or income or salary. I'm telling you, it's not scriptural for men of God to pay them every month receiving salaries. We have to go through the weather. But I'm basing my argument on the weather. So don't just say that, hey, now Michael is saying this, bringing something that is contrary to the word of God or what is in the church. I'm talking about biblical doctrine. What is stipulated? What is in the word of God? The available evidence. What we have in the word of God. If you look at it from the preceding and succeeding test, we should not be fond of or receiving salaries paid. At the end of the month, income, every day, everything you do, TNT, you receive this, fine. When you do so, God will bless you. At the end of the day, God himself will reward. God himself will pay you. But this is the case that you are being paid for the work that you are doing. You are being paid for. So what kind of reward do you need from God? You have to work to even support the poor, the needy in the church as a minister of God. I'm telling you. Paul did that. Paul did that, my brother, my sister. I'm not bringing any new message. It's in the word of God. Paul did that. The Paul worked to support himself in preaching, in serving God. Glory be to God. Helping the poor, the needy in the church. Collecting offerings, not just collecting of, uh, offerings or, or collections to her, to to. to to live in affluence or to live in extravagant life, no, to go and support the poor, the needy in the church. Pastors, do you receive offerings, tithes to support the needy? To help build the body of Christ? Or for personal welfare? Interest? Repent and believe the gospel. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, serve God willingly. Serve God willingly. Serve God cheerfully. And the next point we have to consider, serve God tirelessly. You have to serve God tirelessly. Tireless. Don't get tired. Don't be weary in doing good. That's what I'm going to say. Be, don't be weary in doing good. Serve God tirelessly. Without getting tired. No. Never give up on God. Serve God. Serve God. That's the third point. Serve God tirelessly. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let's read the word of God quickly. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. What are the word of God say? Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let's listen to the word of God. And let us not lose hearts and grow weary and faint. Okay? In acting. Okay? In acting. In acting, nobody nobly okay. That is what it is. Listen carefully. Let me take it again. And let us not lose hearts and grow weary 
and faint in acting nobly, acceptably, mm. doing what is right, doing what is pure, and doing right. For in due time, at appointed time, we shall reap. If you do not lose and relax our courage and faith. So whatever we are doing, we should not get tired. It's not even to, to serve God, to do a lot of things in the house of God when nobody will appreciate you. When nobody will even recognize it. When people who are not even happy, uh, but the word of God says, don't be tired. Don't get tired. Don't be weary. Serve God tirelessly. In prayer, in preaching, in duty, in holiness, in righteousness, whatever you are doing, don't get tired. Don't give up. Don't give up. And when you do that, at the end of the day, the Almighty God reward you. Don't get tired. tired. Serve God tirelessly. Serve God nobly. Serve God in holiness. Serve God always. Glory be to God. The last point is that serve God always. Serve God always. Day and night, serve God. Serve God always. Some of you, when you were in second day school, you were on fire for the Lord Jesus. SU members. When you were in the members, Pensa members, Bessa members, Pensa members. But now are you in Christ? Are you in the Lord? Some of you will be saying, Oh, I used to pray 24-7. I used to fast every week. I used to study the word of God. I used to preach. I have to do this. I've been doing that. Now I am tired. Now we are growing. So we have not been doing it. Repent. You should never give up. You have to continue. You have to grow in Christ. In the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to grow in serving him. We have to do so always. Day and night. We need to do so. We need to serve God day and night. We need to serve God day and night. We need to serve God day and night. So let's read quickly from Acts of the Apostle. What Paul the Apostle once again said in Acts of the Apostle chapter 26 verse 6 to 7. Acts of the Apostle chapter 26 verse 6 to 7. Let's listen to the word. And now I stand here on fire to be judged on the crown of the hope of that promise made to our forefathers by God. Which hope of the Messiah and the resurrection our twelve tribes confidently expect to realize as they fervently worship, serve without ceasing, night and day, serving God without ceasing. And for that hope, O King, I am accused by Jews and considered a criminal. So if you are serving God night and day, day and night, always you are mad for the Lord Jesus. People consider you to be lunatic. People may say you are criminal. Oh, people may say you are out of your senses. Don't give up, my brother, my sister. Continue serving God. This happened to Paul. Paul, this is what he was saying. That he was serving God day and night. But people considered him People considered him criminal. He was considered.